Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you 10 quick and easy style tips to get ready quickly but also to feel our best in our outfits. The secret to putting together a really good outfit quickly is to have a couple of style tips up your sleeve that you can pretty much use to make any outfit combination feel more elevated. Let's get started with today's video. Here are my 10 quick and easy style tips I use every day. The very first thing I like to do is to have a favorite or go-to outfit proportion because this is the step that helps me choose out which pieces I'm wearing really quickly. I would say my go-to outfit proportion is a slightly looser trouser right now and a slightly more fitted top. The fact that I know this means that when I'm picking out things in my wardrobe, if I've chosen one piece to wear, it's super easy to find that second piece to match with the first and it becomes really easy to put together an outfit that immediately I know will feel really good on the body. If you're looking for your ideal proportion, I want to share with you some other ideas. So if any of these catch your eye, you can try it out in your own wardrobe. So when I'm not doing an oversized bottom with a fitted top, sometimes I do the reverse. A very relaxed top and then a slightly more fitted bottom. And I'm going to show you some of the outfits on Pinterest that follow this outfit formula. In these Pinterest outfits, you can see that the bottom or the skirt is always showing off the legs a little and the top is worn in a way that feels very relaxed and loose and comfortable. A very common proportion I see is when the entire outfit feels relaxed but in these outfits, nothing is going into oversized territory. This is a very modern look and I feel like if you have very timeless or classic style, this type of proportion always feels very safe and it always looks good. This is an outfit proportion I often wear, but it's not currently my go-to. There are so many outfit proportions, but the last one I want to mention is going for something cropped in your blouse or your shirt or your top and going for something high-waisted in the pant or skirt. This feels like a really flattering combination because no matter what you're wearing, the waistline is defined. With your crop piece, you can obviously tuck it in, leave it out, whatever. But usually in this type of outfit, the waistline is what's accentuated. This tip here absolutely does not mean that this is the only outfit proportion I'm wearing. Most days I'll probably wear something different, but on those quick and easy days, I can always rely on this favorite proportion to make sure I put together an outfit really quickly. It then also gives me time to focus on the following steps. A sole rule that I use every day is to wear one basic item in an outfit and then to match it with more detailed or elevated pieces. I think it's very possible to wear all basics and make it look very chic if you do a lot of accessorizing and add a lot of creative touches to the outfit. But if you wanted to get ready really quickly, then having one basic and mixing that with more detailed pieces is just really a quick and easy way to get dressed. So in today's outfit, my black pants will be my basic item. And instead of wearing it with a white t-shirt or white shirt, I've just gone for a graphic tee instead and then matched it with this black jacket with these gold buttons. Had it been white t-shirt and then black blazer, I would feel that I need to accessorize a lot more, but now my pieces already have done a lot of the work for me. I've still got a lot of accessories on, but I don't think it's a must. Whereas if it was really plain, then I would feel like I needed to accessorize to bring the outfit together. If I was wearing something like this navy silk skirt today, this is one of the more classic items in my wardrobe, so I would pair it with something more detailed. I might do something like this one. This piece has a lot of texture, it's got some additional colors, and for me, this is an outfit complete. If I paired it with the white shirt, I feel like I need to do a good amount of accessorizing for me to feel like this outfit is an outfit. If I pulled out this skirt to wear today, then instead of looking for more elevated pieces, I'll probably go straight to something really basic, like a black tank top, and this will be my outfit that day. This is pretty much how I choose out which pieces to wear every day. I'm constantly mixing basics with slightly more elevated pieces, so we have a good balance of the two to create an outfit. My next little tip is to do with handbags, and this is something I do every single day that I think works especially well if you are more petite like me. So with my bags, I like to wear them a little bit higher than what is usual. And this applies to crossbody bags, shoulder bags, any kind of bag really. I like to wear them a little bit higher. The reasoning is that if I'm wearing a bag and it sits a bit higher, it makes the body look a little bit shorter and the legs a bit longer. Whereas if I wear a bag super low down, it makes my body look longer and my legs shorter. This visual trick is something that takes pretty much no effort, but I do feel like it makes a big difference. Years ago, I would have tons of bags sitting quite low because the strap wasn't adjustable or I didn't bother adding more holes to it or something. And I just really find it to be a lot less flattering compared to wearing it higher. One of the reasons that I really love this bag is because the chain strap sits at the perfect length for me. 
I can wear it quite high crossbody or wear it on my shoulder and both of them I feel like looks quite good. When the bag is bigger, I feel like it's even more important for me to have it sit higher. Otherwise, I do feel like it's dragging me down a little bit. For this bag, when I wear it crossbody, I feel like it's pretty much the perfect length that I would want it. On the shoulder, this bag is more of a regular length and I'll actually love to add a few more holes to it so it sits a little bit higher on the body as well. Something incredibly basic that I like to do is to always define the waistline. And for me, defining the waistline is tucking things in, but doing it in a way that doesn't create too much bulk or messiness around the waistline. Today, I'm wearing a simple t-shirt. It's a fairly light material and very easy to tuck in. So I just tuck the whole thing in and there's not a lot of bulk. So this works well. I've just moved the camera slightly because I want to show you for this particular blouse something that feels quite voluminous, how I would tuck it in. If I just tuck the whole thing in to show you, it's not really a very flattering look. You can see that there's definitely a little bit of puffiness all around and it just, it just doesn't look good. What I would do now is to basically take some of the material and then gather it at the back before tucking it into my pants. It just feels a lot less puffy and a lot more flattering. Something else I would do, and I'll probably do this one most of the time, is that I'll just tuck in a little bit at the front and then basically fidget a little bit with the sides so everything kind of lays a little bit more flat. This is how I would wear the top most of the time and I do think it's a big difference tucking it in in the two ways I showed versus tucking everything in. Next up, I'm showing you this silk bias skirt and I'm pretty much referring to any kind of skirt that has a thinner material. This top is not very heavy, but if I tuck it in, honestly, it's just incredibly um, unflattering to say the least. How I tuck with these skirts is that I pretty much try to tuck as little as possible into the skirt. So you only see a little bit of the material and then I like to make sure I have enough excess material so it then covers the area that I just tucked. I've done a half tuck, leaving this side untucked because I'm really trying to tuck as little as possible into this skirt. If you have a skirt with a thinner material, then I think this is definitely worth a try if you're not happy with the way things look tucked in. I've just grabbed my jewelry box because I almost never feel like an outfit is complete without jewelry. Even on the most simple of days, when I'm just working from home, running some errands, I will still be wearing some jewelry. If I'm in a rush, the go-to way for me to pick and choose what to wear is that I'll mix something slightly chunkier with something more dainty. It's a similar concept to how I style my clothing. I really love the visual interest jewelry creates when we've got something super chunky next to something very dainty and fine. So in today's look, I've done a big earring and this is very common for me. This necklace has a thin chain with a big charm, so the necklace itself already plays with proportions, but I feel like combining with the earring also works really nicely. And it works that this pendant is a bit lower, so it's not too high and we don't have too many competing things too close to each other. This is my current stack where we've got slightly chunkier, or at least medium bracelets. And I've also got on a super, super dainty ring. In another combination, I've kept the red beaded bracelet and I've mixed it with a simple dainty gold bracelet. I love playing around with different sizes where I love to mix something slightly bigger or something slightly daintier. And it's just a nice contrast I love to use when I'm mixing jewelry together. Jewelry is incredibly personal and even with big statement pieces, I feel like if I just wore it alone, it would allow the piece to shine more. But I just really love mixing the chunky with the really dainty. And it just creates a lot of visual interest for me to see the opposites kind of worn together. Continuing on with jewelry, something that I do every day is to put on rings or bracelets. I have always put on rings and recently I've just added bracelets back into my everyday kind of jewelry and the reason is because i talk a lot with my hands i don't need to tell you guys but i fling them around all the time when i'm having a conversation with someone if we're thinking about personal image or personal style i do feel like having a couple of rings or bracelets just really complements the rest of your outfit another reason i like to wear rings and bracelets is because this is uh, jewelry that i can actually see unlike earrings or necklaces Sometimes they're not so visible, so being able to see it for me is always incentive to wear it. It's one of those things that just makes me feel a bit nicer, a bit more put together, and I include it in every single outfit I wear. Towards the end of putting together an outfit, I usually consider what shoes I like to wear with the look. Beyond considering lifestyle factors, like how much I'm going to walk that day, the way that I pick my shoes is that I try to match the depth 
of my shoe to my bottom. So if I'm wearing a white top, dark bottoms, I'll try to wear dark shoes because I feel like on someone petite, it feels quite elongating this way. The same thing applies if I'm wearing a dark top, light bottoms. I usually like to go for a lighter shoe. Up until recently, I only had my white sneakers for a lighter shoe. But I recently did decide to purchase these loafers in a white color and I feel like for any white bottoms that I wear, and I wear them a lot, this will be a really great shoe to pair with that. The reason why I often, but not always, like to match my bottom to my shoe is because I feel like it creates a lengthening effect and it doesn't cut me off as much. As someone petite, I really like that. Most of the time, I feel like we just know which shoe is going to match with our outfit. But on those days where we're not sure or we just want to get out the door really quickly, this is a go-to tip that I often use in the morning. A style tip that I do every single day is to add a pop of color to my outfit and it can be really, really subtle or quite bold. Sometimes I'll do a piece of clothing in a really bright color and match it with more neutral tones. Other times I'm wearing something fairly monochromatic like I am today and I'll use my accessories to bring more color. I love choosing out my scarves in a fun color because it does serve as that pop of color whenever I'm wearing something like this. I've not always been a scarf person, but I feel like I'm getting into them more and more. And in this outfit, I really love the addition of color through the scarf. The scarf is really light and it's actually a linen material, but even then, it's obviously more of a transitional piece. In the warmer months, I might use a silk scarf like this one or this one, and just use these as little necktie, tie them to a bag, use them as a belt. There are so many options and these are usually pieces that I'll choose in a color. So when I am wearing neutrals, I can use these as pops of color. Another way that I really like to add color is through my bags or my shoes. If I'm heading out and everything in my outfit feels really, really neutral, then I would swap out my bag that day for a colorful bag. The only thing about a bag is that once you get to work, you put it down and then you don't have color again in your outfit. When I don't want that to happen, I'll add color through my shoes. These are some mustard yellow clogs. And they're not the brightest of colors, but because I'm pairing it with black, it will really pop in this outfit. This is the reason why I often go for colorful shoes. Oftentimes my outfits are quite neutral, so I love to use accessories as an easy way to add color. I just changed up my jewelry a little bit to use a bit more color. So on my ring, I've got this red colored stone. I've also added a little green pendant to my necklace stack, and that's one more color. These are all really subtle touches, but I feel like a couple of them collectively in an outfit gives me enough color. Let me know in the comments whether for your style you need a little bit of color for it to feel complete or whether you're just happy with complete neutrals. My last two tips are a little bit less about styling and more about the morning routine. Before I run out the door every day, I really like to put on a brick red lipstick and then basically blot it down a little bit so it lasts throughout the day. I've been doing this for, I would say the last like five, six years. And the lipstick I've used in those five, six years is 3CE Smoke Rose. I only own a handful of lipsticks now and this 3CE Smoke Rose is something that I've just kind of continuously worn over the years. Makeup routines are so incredibly personal and I'm always very nosy to know what are the steps um, you can't live without. For me, it's a little bit of concealer and then a blotted down brick red lipstick day. The very last thing I do every day is to apply a little fragrance. This seems obvious but I wanted to mention it because I just want to share with you some of the fragrances I use because I do get some questions and it's so simple um, I don't think I can make an entire video about it. The fragrances I like are often very light and delicate scents and a little bit more on the unisex side except for this one. The first fragrance I want to share and my oldest one is Byredo Gypsy Water. Because I'm no good with fragrances, I'm just going to tell you what the notes are. The most prominent notes of this fragrance are Juniper Berries, Incense, Amber, Vanilla, Pine Needle, and Sandalwood. The other fragrance I own is the Loewe 001 Woman. And this is a fragrance that I've been using for about a month. So I got the sample, I love the sample so much, I decided to get the bottle. To me, even though it says woman, I feel like it could be more of a unisex scent. The main qualities of this Loewe 001 is woody, citrus, powdery, vanilla. And honestly, it's just a light and delicate scent. I feel like if you like the gypsy water, this is kind of in the same family, where it's not overpowering and just very delicate of a fragrance. The final fragrance I have is for sentimental reason. It's Jo Malone Nectarine Blossom and Honey. And this is the only fragrance I've ever repurchased. I was really into fragrance when I was a little bit younger. 
So seven years ago when I was in Hong Kong, when I met my partner, I was wearing this every day. So I just like to keep it in my collection for date nights or anything like that. This fragrance is incredibly different from the other two. Instead of being very delicate and light, this is very, very fruity and sweet. To be honest, it is a little bit sickening if I, if I smell it too much. But for sentimental reasons, I do have it. Those were all the things that I wanted to talk about in today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I feel like it seems like the opposite of quick and easy because I've been talking for ages. But these are steps that I do fairly intuitively when I'm putting together an outfit. And because I use them often, putting together an outfit actually becomes a lot quicker and easier because I repeat these steps. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing today's video. If you did, I do make weekly style videos here on YouTube and also my Instagram account where I share a lot of more frequent style content. Have a great week ahead and I'll see you next one. Bye.